Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. It was, oh, and Skip. Skip and Shannon, the moderators. She was like, yo, dog, hate your fucking Jerry Jones take about Mike McCarthy being too overweight to coach. I don't care that this is your show. I don't care that you get paid five, seven, ten million a year. I'm a woman. I got a voice. I don't like your take. I'm the moderator. Nigga, shut up. Oh. That's what happened. Okay. And Skip sat there and sat there. What could you say? No, but what he thought, happened. what he thought, what he thought was, <laughs> do what the fuck I want on my show. This, is, this whole show exists because of me. Shannon's here because of me. The set is like this because of me. The topics are like this because of me. Our pre-production is like this because of me. And Fox is probably a sports channel now because I decided to leave ESPN. That's true. I can't say nothing now because... I respect you. I'm fucking 70, 60 years old, but you're wrong. It's my shit. Same with Steve. No different. Where do you think he learned it from? Where do you think he learned it from? That's a good one. Do you think Steve would behave anywhere near the way he's been behaving if he were across from Skip? No. Because that was Skip's show. Even though Steve was the man, even though we may have felt like Steve was a lot better, some of us, some people, even though Steve was of the culture, even though Steve was the person that you see ESPN grooming, mm-hmm. cold pizza's mine. <laughs> cold pizza. Not first take. The reimagination of cold pizza, this is mine. When I went to do first take, I'll expose some shit. When I went to do first take, uh, whatever year that was, after the show, Steven was there, and it was a great show. Mm-hmm. And after the show, he wasn't a main host. And he said, Yo, don't say nothing. Don't tell nobody. This is still in the works. They thinking about... This is after they fired Steve. They fired him. Too controversial. Then he came back, popped up. He was like, don't tell nobody. They thinking about bringing me back. Let me do first tape with Skip, my guy. Like, they talking about it right now. It could be big. I said, oh, shit. If that happens, you and Skip every day? Wow. And then he got the gig. And when he got the gig, almost at the end of every show, he sung Skip's praises. It don't matter if he won the argument. He still said, ah, Skip, this is your world. This is your show. You invited me here. You invited me here. Remember shit I used to say about Fab? Yo, I would never diss Fab. He could do whatever he want to me. You know why? He invited me here, kind of. Like, when I needed a feature, he popped up. He didn't have to. He was popping. I wasn't. It's like a respect thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. Steve made it a point to say that. Then Steve got his raise, Skip left, got his raise, then everybody left ESPN. And when I say everybody, I mean everybody, I won't go down the list of names. And Steve was clearly the man. Enter Max. I like Max. Max from day one offered strong pushback to Steve, and as time progressed, the pushback got stronger in areas that they shouldn't have been stronger in. Max should have been never telling Steve what happens in basketball, Basketball. and, and Steve wouldn't tell Max what happens in boxing. But way too many times, especially when black people kept getting killed, Max was going up their body and shit. In a good way sometimes, too. Not at the expense of my people maybe saying I'm Conan. Because that's what the street... That is what... And that that is what... No, 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 that's what happened. No, that's what happened. So, but again... It was to the point... I'm, I'm talking, I'm over a year I, ago. No, yo. you're right. I'm no, talking no, you're over right. a year that. ago when Steve would come on and say, hey, Max gives really good takes on these black black matters. I see that y'all appreciate it. I also appreciate it from him. But I'm a black man. My view, that happened. No, that can't keep happening on my show. I, I get it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. That one, well, sometimes, right or wrong, you got to shut the fuck up. The end. You got to play ball. This is Steve's show. It's hey, show. Right. Yeah, hey. It's true. It's a show. But, but let me ask you this. Do you think that as, as the boss, right? See, this is, how, this is my personal thing. I don't give a fuck if some of my employees are better than me. They still my employees. So I'm going to profit. I'm going to eat based on their work, right? That's that's me. Everybody else don't feel that way. You get what I'm saying? Like, uh, what is it? Uh, 48 laws. Never outshine a master. That's rule number one. 
I don't really subscribe to that because I look at it like, dog, if you work for me and you killing them, you elevating me. But everybody don't look at it like that. You know what happens sometimes, Ish? And I'll give an example. There would be times on the old version of this podcast where I would come in and say something. And I would say it because I spoke to everyone involved. <laughs> and because those things didn't come to fruition yet, it might be hard for someone else to see why that's being said and then you offer pushback. So a lot of times I used to say something that I was saying for fact. I just couldn't say I was saying yeah, it for yeah, fact. Yeah, gotcha. Like Stephen A. often will say, oh, during the break, such and such, a coach called me. This person called me. I'm, this is the breaking news here. Let me give you what's really happening. If y'all want to know why Stephen A. gets paid more than everybody else up there, that is why. You got rapport. It's because... He has access. He has rapport. Yeah. Rapport. It's got access. It's got availability. He's on every fucking show. It, it's, it's in sacrifice of his personal life. You don't hear much about kids, wife, girlfriend. You just don't. He's work. He works. He works. When you're that person, you know what's really important? Your credibility. Indeed. That's why Wolf. It's the most important thing. He used to be the most credible cat. And Wolf just came out of nowhere and kind of took it from him in the NBA. But Stephen A. Smith used to be the underground black dude that had was that was in with all of the black athletes. And and Wolf just came out of nowhere and took that. But so ahead. now let's bring it up. Stephen A. comes. Here's, a, here's an example. I'm just freestyling okay. this off the top. Stephen A. comes and on multiple broadcasts, he'll say, hey, Mark Jackson should have a coaching job. He's saying that because he spoke to Mark Jackson. Right. right. He spoke to teams. He's spoken to players. He's spoken to the Warriors brass. He knows why he don't have a job. He knows the real reason. He knows the reason we don't know. I know it, too. I know it. <laughs> we know it. But he'll say, Mark Jackson should have a job. I am against all these coaches being hired, and Mark Jackson is not being hired. You know what Mark, Mark Max do? Shit on that whole tape. No, well, why should he be? Oh, uh, okay, I get, okay. Why would he be? Uh, he didn't do a great job when he was there. They hired a white coach. He totally outperformed him, took them to a 73 win. He'll do that. Knowing that Steve I, my is, take is based off of some real shit that I know. Yo, I'm paid here because I talk to everybody. I'm telling you something yeah. that I know. I'm breaking news here yeah, without the little breaking up. news sticker on the side. That's why this is my show. I'm not debating this with you. And you're going to make me say, yo, I spoke to fucking Pat Riley. You're going to make me say, yo, Jimmy Butler sat in my house. You're going to make me say something that I shouldn't Co say right here I, I, I spoke because you just together. making a point that's going to be correct to the argue. entire audience. It's going to be right. Whatever you say is going to be right. Yo, Steve Kerr did come and make them a 73-win team, added some players they had a great draft, blah, 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 blah. That's right. So? So? I spoke to somebody, and I'm, I'm this is what's happened. It's a consensus in the league. Mark Jackson should have a job. And, that, and that, ha that has happened too much over the last year and a half, and I watch it every morning. Yeah, I watch it every morning between them two. It get heated. They cut the commercial break fast. Sometimes they leave it on, you still hear Molly talking when they think they on commercial break. You see Max start sweating. He starts saying shit real stupid when uh, Steve got him under pressure. When Steve got his homeboys there, uh, the big nigga that used to play football, the big black guy, I don't remember his name. The other, Some of the other niggas. When Steve got his dudes there, they all jump Max. They all come in there and say, Max, shut the fuck up. You don't know shit about shit. Shut up, nigga. <laughs> you can go get another check, though. Well, from ESPN, he's not fired from ESPN. He just took him off the They're show. just doing a reshuffle. They're doing a reshuffle. They said they might be bringing in Michael Irvin. That's the... Word. Michael, Will, Bond, and fuck... They're doing a reshuffle. They're doing a reshuffle. Live, in real time. A lot of people are doing those live, in real time reshuffles without consumers really knowing. They're just announcing it here. And that'll be a great show, but... Let me tell you something. The greatest basketball show to exist, y'all know what it is. What? Boy. TNT. Oh, you, they're unbeatable. That's, yeah. the, that's almost the best show to exist, period. Yeah. There's not a better it's show. It's the now. best podcast. That's, 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 that's the bar yeah. for blacks. Yeah. For blacks. I'm not talking about Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For blacks. The best, best, best podcast. That's the show. Yeah. That's the best show, best pod, sports, yeah. best personalities. They're all a Hall of Famers. They're all won awards. Ernie Johnson's the man. They're all the man. That's the show. If you put Magic Johnson, Mike Wilpon, and Steve together, you make me think of that show. You're missing an Ernie. Y'all don't have an Ernie. You need an Ernie. You need an Ernie. You need an Ernie. You need an Ernie. 
No, yeah, you do. You need Ernie. You definitely need Plenty Ernie. Times, Ernie. Plenty of times, plenty times, Kenny, Shaq, and Charles be up there sounding real fucking blubber mouth yeah. like people are not watching until you need Ernie, mm -hmm. who, who is in the Hall of Fame he, of Ross. He's the glue. He's the glue. He's the glue. He's the best glue that there is. Hey, hey, why are we on ESPN? If you watch Get Up in the morning, there's plenty of times where all those personalities just start sounding a mess. And Greeny smoothly mm -hmm. ends that. He does. Hey, I'm a Jet fan. I wish that was a little different, but now moving on to this thing. Like, you didn't even notice. <laughs> but Stars but can be in a wreck. But that's the real journalism. Yeah, yeah. That's the real journalism. Like, so look, let me give you yeah. some flowers. Finally, a flower. Bitch, I'll give you flowers. Shut yeah, up, man. Yeah, like a daisy. Some Yo, whack. Some oh, whack. Daisy. Some whack. Yeah. A whack little flower. Like, every, like everybody, <laughs> thinks, everybody thinks oh, podcasting yeah. is easy. Right? Everybody thinks that is true. Easy. They do think that. They just think you really just sitting up here talking. That is true. It's not as simple as that. And we try to say it every day. So we're going to, no, we're going to give an example. Last week, we did Parks is Wet. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I went back and I listened to it. And the shit that you did with the wedding made niggas feel like they was there. Mm -hmm. Like, people was like, yo, I felt like I was there. I, or I felt like I missed something at the wedding. Mm -hmm. Like, I wanted to be there. I don't even know Parks. I want to just be there to get the vibe and just... Okay, that was um Joe Budden talking about the Max Kellerman thing and the Stephen Coon Smith and also showing how Skip Baseless was. Look, man, to me, this is him calling the kettle black. If you feel this way about how Stephen Coon Smith did what he did, well, how, how come you did the same thing to Rory and Maul? Rory and Maul wasn't trying to take your show over, but yet you just got rid of him. Why? Because you had to pay him. And now all of a sudden you're being this Joe talking about, oh, well, you know, um... Well, you see, it's it's like this, you know, um, Stephen A, you know, Max thought he was better than Stephen A. You know, this all happened with Skip because Skip could do what he want because it was his show. You're, I mean, and Joe, Joe is right. But to me, in this situation, Joe, you can't talk. <laughs> you just did your co-host who they both made your show. They made your show. Rory and Maul made your show because they had their own opinion. These two guys, they look like guys you got your hand up. You got your hand up both day on um, ass crack. They nothing but puppets. So this is my problem with it. Look, I don't have a problem if somebody I don't like or if they made something, if they made a great point, I give them a 99%. I don't give them a hundo because to me they ain't real because I don't like they punk ass. But <laughs> if they said something straight, Joe Budden gets a 99 on this one. He gets a 99, you know, but he, but, but. He was right in everything he said, but dog, you did your co-host dirty. Your co-hosts weren't trying to take over your show. They wanted to grow with the show. That's why they signed the percentage deal. They helped the show get to where it's at. Now, I'm not saying that Joe Budden didn't do anything. Joe Budden is, is, is great at doing what he does here, which is spewing bullshit and making it seem like everything is that he's saying is truth and that it's the all like he's the almighty Joe and he knows everything, all that bullshit, that condescending shit. To me, he's condescending. To me, he's a bitch ass nigga. But that's another story here and there. Um, to me, you're trying to project and say, well, this is what happened with Max Kellerman. Look, all that happened with Max Kellerman was Max Kellerman thought that he ran the show and Stephen Coon Smith had to let him know this is my motherfucking show. That's all that happened. He just put his foot down. Um, when Skip Baseless, like Skip Baseless with um Jenny, Jenny had a right to set him straight because Jenny is the moderator. And Jenny, you know, it's it's the facts. It's like, look, Jenny just felt like, look, you're gonna get mad and say he's a bad coach because of his weight. I know coaches who are 300 pounds, but they're some of the greatest coaches I've ever seen. Skip Baseless says some of the most outrageous shit. Now, 
60% of the time, I admit, like, Skip Baseless knows what he's talking about. But the other 40% is him just exaggerating and spewing bullshit. Shannon, Shannon is to me 50-50. Like one minute he's cool, the next minute like he's just dicey. Because football, he's a whole 50%. Basketball and other sports, the, the cap, the cap meter, the cap meter, that's what I call it, the cap meter, that motherfucker's a 50. <laughs> so he's half and half, nigga. Like the shit, the, like, like, like the um, like the sugar and shit you use in your drink. So look, um, I don't have a problem with this. Um, you know, if you guys like Joe and all that, that's cool. I never really cared for Joe's show. I never really cared for Joe Budden, but he's absolutely correct in everything he said. So I give him a ninety-nine because he's not a full hundo, but I give him the ninety-nine. You know. That that's what's up. What he said because it's it's absolutely right. So um, let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about it. Do do y'all feel um Joe made some good points or do you think Joe's full of shit? Um, let me know, man. Um, thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this. Hit the notification bell to um, select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you love what you hear, you can donate to the page by cash apping me at the word welcome, the number two, and then HDIITV. Thank you all for listening and thank you all for your support to the page, man. I'm Thank you. It's a blessing. You guys are still sticking with me, even though they stopped my, my premiere. They stopped a lot of things. They're not sending my notifications out. Hey, you guys are still supporting the page, man. And uh, when I open a Patreon, I know I keep saying it. I know I keep saying it. But when I do it, I want it to be right for you guys. And the information I provide is right for you guys. And you guys enjoy it. So um, thank you guys for listening. Um, Make sure you check out other videos. We got the RNS 26 out. Um, Basically, Uncle Frank and um, Christian are going at it. <laughs> um. You know, and um, we're also talking about other things as well. Um, also, the Family Ties reaction video um, to the Kendrick Lamar, him and Baby King. Kendrick Lamar is back after three years, spitting an um, verse. Um, you know, let I'm basically letting you know how I feel about that. Um, also, make sure you guys look at OSHA isn't doing their job because they're not doing their job. People are getting heat strokes. People are dying out there. Make sure you check that video out. Um, also, check out HDZ Report Part 12, where I'm talking about Deshaun Watts and how the trade for him to go down to Miami could have happened as good as yesterday, but they didn't want to. So check that out. Um, also, check out um, the other stuff I got out there, man. Um, also, go check out this story, Throwing a Killer Party. Um, it's about the story of Tyler Hadley from Port St. Lucie, Florida. And it also shows you the difference between how the police and people react when you're white as to when you're black. So um, thank you guys for listening. We out. Deezy.